Hi, I'm Nicole. Today I'm going to show you how to replace the rear drum brake shoes on this 1993 Nissan D21. And for all you ladies out there who might be afraid to try to do this repair yourself, I'm here to encourage you to try. I learned what a rear drum brake, even what a drum brake was, uh, two days before I made this video. So we can all learn together uh, and get the job done. The first thing we're going to do is pull off the wheel. Um, I like to use a brake bar. bit more leverage. Uh, so we first loosen these when the car is on the ground. Uh, so I haven't jacked it up yet. That'll um, help get some leverage. And we've got um, righty tighty, lefty loosey. So I'm pulling this way. They're on there pretty good. So that breaker bar gives a lot better leverage than a smaller We're gonna jack the car up and then we will take them all off. Okay, so we have these loose. Um, I guess they're finger loose so I can just pull them all the way off. And then a lot of times I set this um, underneath kind of the frame of the vehicle just as extra precaution if something <laughs> fails with the, the jack stand or whatnot. This is our drum, brake drum. Oh, it's kind of loose. The other side was a lot more stuck on. Wow, look at that. Okay, so if the drum is stuck, the way to um, get it unstuck is I just googled what um, type of bolts to use to uh, loosen the, the rear drum brake and went to the hardware store, got these, they screw in there real nice, we got one there, one here, Let's side a little bit, pulls it out, go back and forth, and you'll eventually get So with the drum, um, there is a max diameter that's listed on the inside uh, right here. So just look at that. Um, and then there's a tool, kind of caliper style tool that you can measure the inner diameter. And you wanna make sure you measure the, you know, the part that the brake pad's actually wearing on, not this um, outer part. So we'll measure that, make sure that it's still kind of up to spec but these don't need to be replaced as often as the brake pads. Um, sometimes these brake, um, all the brake dust and whatnot in here can have asbestos in it, so I'm gonna get suited up with gloves. Our first task is to pull off these springs. This can be um, quite difficult. <laughs> so there's a few different tools you can use. There's um, this spring tool which you can get at a um, auto parts store. So I've seen people um, use wire clippers and supposedly the wire clipper won't um, actually cut this or you could potentially use a pliers uh, or something like that. Oh, and also I am going to, before I get too far along, because as you start pulling this off, a bunch of brake dust is gonna start falling on the ground. 
So I'm going to get a tub to catch all of that. So I just put a tub. Um, if you struggle with pulling off these um, springs, I'd recommend just kind of YouTubing, Googling different ways people do it. A lot of different people have different methods. Um, so I usually watch a bunch of videos and then try different things and probably have to grunt. Oh wow, that came off pretty, pretty good. That's exciting. So set this aside. It's also a good idea to um, take a picture of what it looks like before you pull it apart so that you can figure out how to put it back together. Okay, so I'm actually gonna loosen this, um, this piece right here, which is the kind of the automatic adjuster uh, piece so it, it kind of adjusts the, the tension on the shoes as they wear um, and these let's see we'll get a flathead screwdriver um, and kind of pull this piece back so it's not leveraging on there sometimes they spin different directions depending on what um, side of the vehicle you are in but um, I think I'm gonna try spinning it I think it goes this way. So that gives less tension. So just get a little bit of leverage up here. You should see those threads going into there would be um, loosening it so it'll have less tension pushing out on those shoes. tension so it wiggles. Okay now we're gonna pull off we're gonna pull off the second spring here. Maybe it'll come off as easy as the other one. out so that comes out there we're gonna set this aside we'll be reinstalling that and this little adjuster this out. We're going to set this aside. We're going to clean this before we put it back in. And there is also a spring down at the bottom here that we can remove. This one right here. Yes. Okay. Got that off. We're going to set this aside. <sighs> the springs. The next step is to get these two springs here off. So these are interesting. This is a pin. And then there's actually a slot in this that goes this direction. So we want to push this in and then line that slot up with the pin and then it will come all the way off. They have a tool for removing these that you can get at an auto parts store. Um, I just got this at Advanced Auto Parts. And basically, we're going to push down on this and spin it 90 degrees. We are going to line that up, push in, spin. We got it most of the way, we'll do a little bit more. Push in, spin. Oop. 
there we go. Okay, it's pretty obvious what it actually works. So this has three pieces here, two little metal plates and a spring. So this is our shoe, it is now loose, it comes off of this pin which is coming through here. And this is our uh, side that's connected to our e-brake. So for now, I'm just gonna set it down here. We'll come back to that in a sec. I'm gonna pull this pin out and set it aside just cause it's easy for it to fall out. This, um, so this is the shoe part, this is what we're replacing. This connects to the e-brake um, there. And so I'm gonna get you on a lower angle here. Okay, I hope you can see that. So we've got this little wire and then there's a spring. And this spring doesn't have as much tension as those other ones. So you can push it up and then pull that off. This has, just has like a little hook. So we've got this free. And then what we need to do is remove this piece, this one, from the shoe, because we're gonna keep this. <laughs> this is garbage, this we're re reusing. And there is this little C-clip right here that holds it on right at that pivot point. So the idea is we want to um, spread this part over here. So you use a flathead screwdriver. A thinner one is better. Had a thinner one here. Let's see if we can get that in there to get it started. Wedge it in. There we go. In just a little bit. Just make tiny little incremental. space now just kind of twist get that gap a little bit bigger and we can get the big one in and then if we put it out a little bit we eventually want to come off this direction of it so where we can get on this side have a little bit that you can see right here where there's a gap and so we can stick the screwdriver in there and pull out. Can I get out of here? Okay, there we go. Alright. We're gonna hold on to that C-clip. We're gonna reuse that. And this piece right here. Off. We're also going to reuse that. So hold on to these. This one is garbage. Now we are going to clean off all of the brake dust because that'll get just gunk everything up. So we have this um, brake parts cleaner. You can see that. You can get that at an auto parts store. We just spray it down. Make sure you don't inhale it. You know, keep your <laughs> keep your face away. Then we're also gonna just clean each of these parts. Um, so we spray. Just because you don't know what a drum break is. Doesn't mean you can't do it. 
you just learn as you go. It's pretty fun. Um, okay, so that's all of the parts. We've got two things we need to do. One is, I need to get this guy flat again. I kind of bent it when I was removing it. So, you just use any kind of, probably like some sort of mallet would be better, but this is what I have, so I'm going to use this. And I'm just gonna flatten it. So I'm using this flat side, and I'm hitting it against the concrete here just to get this nice and flat. It's looking a lot better. Much more flat than it was. Okay, so our C-clip's ready to go. And then this one, we're gonna um, give a little bit of TLC too. So we can pull this apart. So we will kind of just a little bit of lube and whatnot in here. So we'll dry that out and gunk. And then this part. Twist this apart now that it's looser. Okay, got that off. Um, let's clean in there, so I'm not too worried about that. This one, I'm going to spray a little bit of the um, brake cleaner stuff on it. Then I'll wipe this off. And then we are going to get some lube onto this because we want this to, um, kind of the parts to move well so that it will adjust the tension on the shoes as needed. So I got this. You definitely want to have brake specific lubricant uh, for these parts because it gets hotter than other parts um, so your kind of general chassis lube is not sufficient. And I'm not 100% sure about for this part um, but definitely for the part um, that the shoes actually touch and I'm just using it here to be careful. So, <laughs> there we have it. Okay. Come out nice, pretty blue. Oop. Okay, I'm gonna get that onto here. I'm pretty sure this is what you do. And here, we're gonna stick that into this part. Put it on here, and then this goes together. Okay. Leave off. Up here we don't want leave on the outside. Because that'll just collect the brake dust. Yeah. Okay. Then we cleaned this off. This thread. And then we're gonna stick a little bit of lube on that. screw this back on and that lube will just kind of get worked in I believe as we screw on. clean. We also need to put some lube on these kind of touch points where the shoes move back and forth on this piece. <laughs> Whatever that's called. So we'll put a little bit of this on here. The things I was watching don't really specify, so I'm just going to put it on down there and down here. I definitely don't want the lube to be getting onto the um, brake pads at all. Our 
are new shoes. Um, one of them has this little stud in it. This um, ridge thing kind of comes up when it's like this. So this pivots there. We've got it on this um, stud here. And then we have our C-clip and we want to get that back on here. On the stud, there's one skinnier side and a fatter side. It goes on this side. So I put this against the cardboard here so I'm not smashing my brake pads into the concrete. And I'm just tapping it really lightly. So once we get that clip on there, then we want to shut, kind of pull those edges of the seat together. off of and there's a little wire in there so I'm gonna push the wire up some of these tasks it's easier with four hands so that's when I ask friends or my boyfriend to come hold stiff but if you can get the tension here and then we just slide that Oh, so close. <laughs> Let me get a rear angle. I gotta get that up there. And then, actually, yeah, they're just ripping. They're just ripping. Okay, get that up there. So close. That slides back on. My spring is a little messed up. Get that back. Okay. Up there. Okay. That's how that's supposed to go. Okay. So we have this hanging down. that. And it's going to end up being in the back. So it spins around like this. So this goes right to here. Um, and then that's going to keep this in place is our pins. So we have our pins um, and that tool. This part is definitely easier with four hands to so. sew. these pieces that we took off and then remember this has the little slot in it that you're now we're gonna line it up with that angle on the pin and then twist it 90 degrees and that will hold it in place. Oh yeah get it nailed it okay so then we've got our other shoe um, for the other side and then this spring that goes connects the two on the bottom here so we can actually connect that right away so we don't have to do the spring until that and then up into position here and we're gonna do the same thing with the little springy just push in and twist and star wheel. Um, this side is the side with the e-brake the e piece um, that has this notch there. Do, do, do. And so that's the side that this goes this direction, that goes that direction. We have this tiny little notch here that points out this way. So there's another piece that goes, that in, goes into that. And then we will set this in here. 
I'm gonna leave this really loose. On the other side, I tightened it a bit, um, kind of like spread it out, and uh, then once I put the first spring on, this ended up kind of pushing out, so I had to end up loosening it anyway. So I'm just gonna leave it like that, <laughs> really loosey goosey. This piece of the spring goes over here um, in this notch, and then we get the fun part of pulling this out. And this was super fun on the other side. I'm gonna pull, and I've got my knee here to pull against this so that this doesn't, the whole assembly kind of doesn't move this direction. Pull. I got this spring on and that put a lot of more tension on here and I had this so loose that when it tightened it it did not um, tighten it into the right spot so that's supposed to be kind of on this notch that is back here back there this is not basically that's just not in the right position so okay I've got this set uh, good actually all that I did is pull this this direction with this little hook and now it's in the right spot. So um, this you can see that notch now is kind of lined up right there. So we put this on um, back in here. See if we get a little bit of leverage in there. Pop that on. There we go. Good. So then this sits there and that's what hits this kind of automatic adjuster thing. Then the spring, um, this side just goes into this hole right there and then this comes to right here. On the other side this one was easier than the other spring so hopefully that is the case. We pull this. I'm going to get my knee down here to counter pull. Beautiful. Okay. The next step is we. Oh, I cleaned out the uh, drum. You can kind of spray it with the brake cleaner thing. I'm in super old, so it still looks pretty dirty, but it's cleaner than it was. Um, so then we just stick this back on, and you might have to adjust things in there if it won't go on. It should be a, like a little snug when it goes on, but not. I'm gonna loosen this just a little bit. So if this star wheel is pushing out on those, it might be too much for um, to fit that on, but you also don't want it to be too loose. Oops. Take a break. 
drink some water. Okay, came back after I drank some water, and it slid right on there, which is pretty sweet. Then I just had to get it lined up with the these. And then you can get it all the way in there. And then what I did on the other side is um, just to make sure, since I haven't done this before, um, had called my boyfriend to come and uh, press down the brake so that I can try to spin this and see if it doesn't work so it shouldn't spin when he's depressing the brake and then um, when he releases the brake it should spin and that way I know that I did it right so I'm gonna go get him we just put the tire back down just kind of line up the holes So I have it set to like 